Hey there, Commanders. It's been a while since I've talked about AX ships, so I figured tonight I would go over my Crate Mark II build. This is one of the first anti-Thargoid ships that I put together. Now, I've tweaked it a little bit compared to what I have in the game to make it easier to fly and more forgiving in combat situations, since learning AX combat is actually a very difficult prospect. It's almost as challenging as PvP. Uh, the Thargoids are very particular in the way that you have to fight them and in the strategies you'll use. Uh, this ship can solo a Cyclops, although that's not a very impressive feat these days given that Sidewinders can do it too. But it does make the task a little bit easier, so there are things that I've thrown in this build to uh, help you distract the Thargoid, to help you be more survivable, at least against low-level Thargoids. And this thing is very effective at killing scouts. So. If you're trying to get your just dip your toe in it, this is a good place to start. Engineering requirements are a little bit on the high side, but it's low on the budget, and you do need to have a tech broker unlocks available to be able to realize this. So it is kind of a late game ship, but on the engineering, it's not terrible. The most important things you'll need are armored power plants and dirty drives. So you'll need Professor Palin and uh, is it Heratani, I believe. So core internals. Military grade composite. This is not reactive surface. You actually don't need it. Because Thargoid damage is principally absolute, the reactive surface composite doesn't benefit you anything. And it costs a tremendous amount of money. So going military grade is a great compromise here. It saves on the rebuy value. It gives you the same absolute hull potential as reactive surface would at a fraction of the price. It's easier to find around the bubble if you don't happen to have access to Shinrarta. 7A power plant, armored grade 5, and monstered. We want a lot of power capabilities, although we do have a lot of power headroom here, so if you wanted to lower your heat profile, you could use thermal spread, or if you wanted extra module integrity, you could go with double braced. I don't recommend stripping down because regular thrusters aren't going to realize the benefit and it lowers your module integrity. You'll need a lot of that to be able to survive a protracted fight, especially against higher level Thargoids. 6A thrusters. Dirty Grade 5, and Drag Drives. Speed is essential. There are certain things that the Thargoid's going to do, um, caustic missiles specifically, that require you to get distance with the Thargoid as quickly as possible so that the missiles don't hit you. You can outrun Thargoid missiles with Flight Assist off if you have a good lead on them. If you're too close and you're inside the missile's turning arc, you'll probably get hit as you try to boost away. So pay attention to the cues, which you will learn as you practice. 5A Frameshift Drive. This one's outfitted Increased Range Grade 5 and Mass Manager, which I recommend if you don't have a fleet carrier. It can be kind of a chore to drag this thing around the bubble. If you do have a fleet carrier, this can be shielded and double braced. 4A Life Support. Here it's dealer's choice. I've opted to lightweight this life support uh, to preserve a little bit of speed, but you can if you're worried about having it get shot out, and it probably will get shot out. Uh, reinforce, or since we've got a lot of power headroom, you can shield it, which takes your power consumption up to 78.4% and doesn't add any more weight to the module, but it does dramatically increase your power draw. So just keep that in mind. Um, you really can go all three directions here, just depending on how you want to lay things out. It doesn't make that much of a difference on your boost speed. Um, so really all you're really all you're choosing is between uh, less integrity and maybe a meter per second or two more speed. Yeah, it's a meter per second difference. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, I would recommend reinforced or shielded, just depending on how you start to uh, figure your own play style out. Reinforced tends to be more accessible engineering-wise. You'll incidentally collect a lot more of that kind of material. And I do recommend A-rated life support. The crate's got a big canopy. I've had it shot out multiple times when fighting Thargoids. You want 25 minutes, so you can take a couple of deep breaths, find a gap in the fight where you can leave that is opportune for everybody, because this build is intended to be used as part of a wing. It's not very strong on its own against the higher level Thargoids. You probably won't be able to do the damage you need to exert and then kill a heart before it goes back in. 7A Power Distributor, Charge Enhanced Grade 5, and Super Conduits. This is to give you flexibility. As you learn how to fight Thargoids, there's going to be other hardpoint layouts that I can go over here in just a second that you might consider. And 6A sensors, long range grade 5 is essential as you kite Thargoids. You're going to be flirting with that upper limit on your typical emissions range. In fact, even with maximum outfitted sensors, I regularly travel farther out 
than the Thargoid can be detected from. So I'll, I'll end up 15 to 20 kilometers away from a Thargoid that I'm fighting as I'm doing kites in a wing, um, which means that visual tracking does become important. If you've got uh, head look mode enabled, it helps. Um, that's where you can just look around by moving your thumbstick. 5C fuel tank is left unmodified. Optional internals are as follows. 6C biweave shield generator. Reinforced grade 5 and fast charge. You can optionally go for high capacity. It takes you from 659 megajoules to 699. Not a huge difference in a fight, but it does have a negative impact on your recovery recharge rates. If you're using, uh, if you're using fast charge, you'll go from 149 to recharge to 129, which can be a big difference in a fight and ultimately allows you to recover more power, although it makes the shield weaker. Uh, note that recharge specifically deals with your time from 50% shield capacity to 100% charge. Recovery is really hard to move. You can get it you know, between 120 and 110, depending on how you play with the shields. If you put a smaller bioweave on here, it can charge even faster. This is where you can play. I recommend starting with a 6C because I think it strikes a really good balance between absolute shielding and recovery recharge time. If you're fighting in a wing, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to break and recover, and, and you'll, be, you'll have a lot more control over how you get engaged. If you're fighting solo, this won't be the case, and you're going to have to tank a lot of incoming damage, which is where the fighter hanger comes into play. If you're fighting solo, you'll want a 60 fighter hanger because it's a good way to distract the swarm. It doesn't last very long, but it does help get some DPS off you, especially if you're using multi-crew. This is one of those situations where... Uh, a fighter flown by a competent commander can be excellent bum bait for the swarm. He can keep them off of you so you can focus on doing a lot of, uh, of damage to the Thargoid itself. But in solo fights, it's a good distraction. Now, I don't recommend deploying fighters when you are playing with other AXI commanders because it still screws up the net code a little bit. It causes things to rubber band really badly. If you know you're going to fight with a group, one of the best things you can do is just stick another hull reinforcement package in here and make yourself a little bit tougher. Or, if you feel so inclined, you can use shield cell banks. I don't think shields are anywhere near as effective against Thargoids as in PvP, because most Thargoid weapons do breakthrough damage that is absolute damage to your hull. So even with the strongest flipping shields on planet, whatever it is you're from, you're going to take a ton of hull damage fighting Thargoids. And take this from a guy who built a shield tank type 10 to go out and try to mess around with scouts. You're going to end up taking a lot of hull damage without the shields even collapsing. I've gotten all the way down to like 85% hull before uh, my last bank charge was exhausted. Uh, in smaller ships, that's an even bigger deal. In a crate, you're kind of soft once your shields go down. You can get pretty um, pretty tough. 2800 absolute hull, dam absolute hull integrity is nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, but it is something that can get worn down especially over longer fights and especially if you're in a small wing again i recommend this build as part of a wing group if you want to get together axi has flights going out on a regular basis um, i would get into their discord and i would start learning from these guys if you show up in a ship fitted like this um, no one's going to think you're a joke they just might think you're inexperienced and you need to learn which is not a bad thing i've been there they're going to be really patient with you. They'll walk you through everything you need to know. And, you know, guys show up pretty regularly with cheese ball ships that aren't particularly practical. They just want to have fun fighting with a group of, you know, eight or nine other commanders. It happens all the time. Hull reinforcement package. Heavy duty grade five, deep plating. This is actually kind of important. I would stay away from the Guardian hull reinforcement packages on the larger module sizes because you get more integrity from a regular hull reinforcement package with heavy duty deep plating. I kind of wish that wasn't the case because the whole point of having Guardian hull reinforcement and module reinforcement packages, at least in theory, was to give people an easy go-to to build anti-Thargoid ships. But the difference in absolute hull integrity is significant enough that the engineering effort is worth it. I have a decontamination limpet controller in here. This is unengineerable. Uh, it is useful in longer fights because it lets you scrape caustic damage off of your hull without needing to overheat. Overheating isn't as big a deal as it used to be now that the heat bug's been fixed, but it does still add up to something significant over time, and decon limpets do offer a nominal amount of hull repair. It's not as much as a dedicated repair limpet controller, which you could also run here if you so choose, 
Um, but since I'm not, uh, since I don't have Gauss cannons on here, this is actually a harder build to overheat. So decon limpid controllers are a good idea. 4D hull reinforcement package, heavy duty deep plating, just like the five, because the benefit's still there. 3E cargo rack with eight tons of capacity, so you can carry eight decon limpets that you can fire off from your decon limpet controller. That lasts okay in a typical fight. If you need more limpets, you can always synthesize them. A 3D Guardian Module Reinforcement Package. This is essential. You want a Guardian Module Reinforcement Package because it tamps down the electric effect that a Thargoid Interceptor has when it shocks you. It keeps your interfaces from getting screwed up and it protects them from that kind of raw, deadly internal damage. Getting shocked by a Thargoid fries your shields and does random damage all over the place. Over the course of a fight, it can add up. The Thargoid laser weapons, I don't know if they're really lasers or not, but the standard weapon that all the Thargoids fire at your hull is going to deal a lot of internal damage if it hits you unshielded. So the module reinforcement package gives you time to breathe. It's very important to have. I recommend one at least. And size three is a reasonable size. If you're good at kiting and you know how to fly, flight assist off, um, then you're not going to get absolutely plastered in most situations unless you get focused down by the interceptor if you're in a wing having people take turns drawing and drawing aggression is a good way to get around this the 2d guardian uh, the size 2 and the size 1 optionals are both guardian hull reinforcement packages if you don't have hull reinforcements unlocked at the tech broker standard hull reinforcements work here too there's some disagreement among axi guys about whether these are good to have at all I think they're a good way to get extra absolute hull without needing to throw a bunch of engineering materials at it. And they have the added benefit of being caustic damage resistant. Um, we have nine, about 9.8% caustic damage resistance, which means if you do take caustic damage, it gives you more time to get your hull fixed, get everything patched up. It's not a dramatically large amount of time. It's the difference between 2,800 absolute and 3,100. And that's only caustic damage that's only the the burn damage that you get if you get struck by a caustic missile or fly through a thargoid death cloud hard points this is where all the flexibility we've baked in in core internals gets realized this is why in core internals i recommend charge enhanced grade 5 and super conduits you want a lot of headroom to be able to put bigger weapons on if you decide to switch to gauss cannons for example you're going to fill this bar almost all the way up um, where I, where I have it right now is 3D Guardian Shard Cannon Turrets. This is because they are the easiest anti-Thargoid weapon to use. They allow you to close in really tight to a target and do a whole bunch of damage right at point blank range. It's very good for kiting and Thargoid Shard Cannon Turrets are the only turrets that will function as turrets with no one in the gunner seat. They work just like any other turreted weapon in the game, except that they don't have a bunch of their damage shaved off the top like normal turrets. The Guardian Shard Cannon turret deals about as much damage as the Guardian Shard Cannon fixed. I think there's like a 10% reduction. Also, it draws less power, so you can use more of them without as much consequence. It's kind of interesting the way that they've balanced them out. It's also a very forgiving weapon to use. It's reasonably effective against lower level, lower level interceptors, and when paired with other commanders using Gauss cannons, it does enough damage even to the larger targets to be helpful in a fight. It may not be the most helpful, but it is still relevant. And while you're learning what all of the cues are, what all of the strategies are, how to coordinate with wings, this is a really easy weapon to use. It's one less thing to learn about while you're getting your feet wet. Once you start to know what you're doing, you're probably going to want to switch these out for Gauss weapons, at which point I would recommend the Salvation 4-burst Gauss cannon. Um, if you can, you know, however many you want to fit on here. It's kind of dealer's choice. We're super flexible, but I do recommend, since you're in a crate, that you have remote flak launchers. It's really important to be able to deal with the swarm if it comes after you, and the crate is just fast enough that if you were running FA off, you can do a flip and burn, and you can fly backwards to pop a bunch of rounds into the swarm, and then once it's weak enough, you can boost past the remainder and and uh, you, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Uh, Xeno Scanner, uh, when you're starting fights, this is helpful for getting a detailed scan so you can sub-target hearts and get uh, detailed status on where everything is. It does help your Guardian Shard Cannons be more precise, you know, as for what Shard Cannons are in precision. It's, it's 
Doesn't make a big difference, but it does help since your turrets are going to be able to track independently of where you're facing. This does make it really easy to kite a Thargoid because you don't have to look it in the face when you're trying to shoot it. Uh, zero F shutdown field neutralizers are mission critical equipment. Always, always, always have them. You need to have at least one. They abuse the crap out of your system's capacitor, which is why, uh, well, that's why you need to be careful about timing. But I'll save that for a dedicated Thargoid tutorial if I ever get around to it. There are a ton of them already made by other members of the community who are more knowledgeable than me on Thargoid fights. I recommend looking up just AXI tutorials. They're all over the place. There's an entire website dedicated to them. Um, I think you can get to them from YouTube. I have to go dig up the links on that. Heat sink launcher. Anytime you're fighting Thargoids, you want to have at least one because it lets you disappear from the interceptor. Uh, if you start to get focused down and you've got wingmates, pop a heat sink. You get all the way down as cold as you can, and then as your teammates are drawing aggression, it makes the Thargoid look at them faster. It also helps you recover from a deliberate overheat if you need to cook off caustic damage. Shield booster here is kind of dealer's choice. I have it in here to give myself a little bit of extra flexibility. If you drop the shield booster off, of course, you're going to lose absolute shielding, but your recovery recharge rates will increase. As for what to put in here, well, basically another heat sink launcher. That's about it. Do not run point defenses when you're going up against Thargoids. They are completely ineffective against caustic missiles and have a tendency of shooting down uh, other people's remote release flak launchers since they don't differentiate between friend or foe. You will piss people off if you have them equipped. Um, and in some cases, they won't let you fight with them. Uh, let's see, what else? I don't think there's anything else direct. Uh, none of the other utilities are really that relevant. It's shield boosters, heat sinks, and then the two dedicated AX utility mounts. Uh, that's about it. Uh, yeah, uh, that's all I've got. Total budget for this build is 206 million as outfitted here with a 10.3 million credit rebuy. Uh, all you have to do is go kill something like a basilisk and you end up making that money back really easy. Uh, several times over, even, over the course of an AX conflict zone. Let's see, is there anything else? Um, nope, I think that's it. That's all I've got for today. I will catch you guys later.